Good morning. Now we'll move to a very important case in the third module. It's called the settlement of foundations. Now you may have probably seen the buildings and the houses getting settled. Settlement is nothing but sinking of the structure into the soil. Now as a geotechnical engineer, we are not quite concerned only about the bearing capacity of foundation, but we are more concerned about the settlement of foundations. Because whenever you've, you've designed a foundation such a way that you expect it to stay for, let's say, 50 years, we need to make sure that the settlement, if there's anything, that happens over a period of 50 years should be within the serviceable limit of that building. For instance, if you construct a house near, let's say, let's say, Alapi or let's say, Fort Kachin, the soil there is quite tricky chances are high that the structure could get settled. Now that settlement may not be immediate. That settlement may attain its maximum value over a period of 25 years, which means when you build a house in 1999 or let's say 2000, that house will probably have a settlement of let's say 15 centimeter by 2020. So 15 centimeter is the depth of a step of your stair. So the building may have settled one step beneath the uh, one step. I'm sorry, one step beneath the ground level. So that that building may be of a limited use. So as a geotechnical engineer, we need to get concerned about that long-term settlement and also the immediate settlement. So the settlement of foundation in general is. A collective contribution of immediate settlement SI, primary consolidation settlement SC, and secondary consolidation settlement SS. So if you can just have a plot between settlement and time, it would look like this, which means the first initial portion within a fair share of time, I'm sorry, not a fair share, but a short span of time could be an immediate settlement SI and later you can expect SC primary consolidation settlement and then you can expect secondary consolidation settlement SS so SI as you can see from this figure is over a very short span of time but the settlement is high SC or primary consolidation settlement takes a longer time compared to the previous one and SS will still take a greater time. An immediate settlement or SI is usually elastic in nature. SI is expressed as QB into 1 minus mu square by E S into IF, where Q is a net foundation pressure in kilopascal, B is the breadth of the foundation or the footing in meter, mu is a Poisson's ratio. E is the Yang's modulus of the soil. IF is an influence factor which you can interpolate from tables provided in standard textbooks and Indian standard codes. So that's about the immediate settlement. That immediate settlement is followed usually by a consolidation settlement. A consolidation settlement, obviously, you could be familiar with the term consolidation because we have already discussed that in, in the previous semester. And it's an engineering property of soil and the magnitude of consolidation settlement SC is given by this equation related to the compression index CC by 1 plus E naught H log sigma 0 plus delta sigma 0 by sigma 0 where sigma 0 is the effective overburden pressure in kilopascal delta sigma 0 is a change in stress due to the applied load H is the height of the clay layer in meter E0 is an initial void ratio and CC is a compression index. So when you have, let's say, a house constructed on a soil of clay nature, immediate settlement would probably happen within a few weeks. So that's of elastic nature defined by the elastic terms mu and E, whereas consolidation settlement is defined by the terms associated with consolidation. CC is a compression index. E0, the void ratio, H, the height of the clay layer below the foundation, 
sigma 0 is the already existing stress and delta sigma 0 is the increase in stress due to the construction of the building. So these two terms have to be considered while designing a foundation. So while defining a designing a foundation, the foundation should be safe against bearing capacity failure or shear failure and also settlement failure. In short, the foundation that you design for a structure should not fail in shear and should have the settlement within the permissible range. That is a challenge for a geotechnical engineer within the fund allotted. Now, another important term is a differential settlement. A differential settlement, you may have seen these kind of photos or maybe in real cases where <clears throat> the wall of a building gets teared off like this diagonally or probably it is better to present it in this picture where you have a house which has a foundation resting on a strong soil on one line and a weak soil on another line so chances are high that this part of the structure tries to settle whereas this part stays as such so there's a chance that the crack gets developed in the wall and the soil beneath this part of the structure settles down. So settlement crack is wider at the top and travels through the weak wall areas like this. Now in this case is a differential settlement. It's more dangerous. So if the settlement is uniform, the structure may not get damaged. It sits with the same settlement throughout. Whereas in differential settlement, it results in additional moment and thus cracks can be observed. Now, it can either be due to uneven load distribution or non-uniform soil strength. Now, non-uniform soil strength is shown in this picture. Another case is uneven load distribution, where you have a structure designed in such a way that a part of the structure is heavier compared to the other part. Even in that case, you can expect the differential settlement. And Indian Standard Code 1904 recommends a limit of the total settlement to 40 mm for isolated footing on sand and 65 mm on clay. Whereas for raft on sand you have 40 to 65 mm and for rafts on clay you have 65 to 100 mm depending on the case. Now uh, the differential settlement can happen to a building like this or it can happen to a rail line like this and in this picture there's a term angular distortion given if you take a look at this picture this rail line is supported at this point by this pillar or a sleeper and at this point by this sleeper so the differential settlement between these two sleepers is represented by an angular distortion i have tried to zoom in into that picture here so let's assume that these two are sleepers or foundation in our case that is separated by a center line distance of L and let's let's assume that the differential settlement magnitude is delta which means the left side footing is moved by a distance delta in extra or in addition to the right side footing so delta by L is what we call as an angular distortion T. Now differential settlement shall not exceed 1 by 300 for a spread footing as per the National Building Code for India and as by Indian Standard Code IS Code 1904 the maximum differential settlement for safety uh, is also stipulated. Now the causes of differential settlement would include and is not limited to the root systems of the maturing trees, flooding, poor drainage, frost action, broken water lines, vibrations from nearby structures, poorly compacted fill soil, etc. Like I said, these are just few examples 
you can have different other cases as well depending on the site condition. Now some of the remedial measures to counteract the differential settlement you can remove the soft soil strata and replace it. You can use a pile foundation. You can have provisions for lateral restraint against expulsion of soil mass from underneath the footing of a foundation. You can have the building constructed quite slowly on cohesive soil and not fast. And the reduction of contact pressure to get the uniform settlement underneath the structure and you can pre-consolidate the building site which means you can accelerate the consolidation process and then have the building constructed later and then you have the option for soil stabilization so these are some of the remedial measures that you can employ at this site to counteract the differential settlement